my mystical friend, and thank you so much for tuning in to today's tarot reading. As usual, instead of making you pick a number for pile one, pile two, or pile three, I'm inviting you to choose a pendant. I've had a lot of people say that they love this as a way to determine which pile of cards is meant for them because you don't have to worry about guessing properly or choosing the right pile for you. Just have a look at the little pieces of jewelry that I've made, which are all in my Etsy shop called The Art of Gems, and decide which one you like best. And based on which piece of jewelry you're most drawn to, that determines which reading is meant for you. So the piles will be listed in the video description box below. But if you'd like to have a look at my little crafty show and tell first, you're welcome to check out this junk journal that I've made. If you don't want to see it, go ahead and skip to your reading listed in the description. Um, but I just felt like I had to share this with you guys. I do have a second YouTube channel called Sarah's Journals where I share these. Um, but I spent a few months working on this one, so I really wanted to kind of show it off on my main channel as well, because look at the cover. I'm sorry, my, my camera's kind of zoomed in on the tarot cards, so I can't show you the whole thing at once, I guess unless I turn it sideways. Um, but I just figured out this new technique for using crystals and gemstones to paint. So I did kind of an underpainting on the cover of this book and then filled in the sky with black tourmaline, the moon with moonstone, the flying saucer with amethyst and tanzanite, a little bit of amber here, some clear quartz and citrine with the yellow underpainting for the tractor beam, some really beautiful orange garnet for the landscape and then a combination of chrome diopside and malachite for the cactus. And I just think it looked so cool. So yeah, if you want to see a full flip through of this extraterrestrial, alien, mystical junk journal, um, I'll put a link to my journal, my journal channel, as well as my stationery shop in the video description. But I just wanted to mention if it ever seems like a long time is passing between my videos on this channel, between the tarot readings or the cult updates, it's very likely that in those big long gaps I've been working on a craft project or something a little creative and you can find the updates for that in the channel called Sarah's Journals. Um, or it's also a possibility that I've been really busy in the Twitterverse, chatting with other people who left the same cult I left. Uh, so you may want to follow me there if, if you feel like you want some updates between videos. But I'll end the intro as of now and let's get into your readings. All right, so for those who chose this lovely green fluorite bead charm with a really cool Tibetan style inlaid bead, this is your reading. I'm going to make today's readings very short and sweet using just the crystal ally cards and one of the cards from the illustrated crystallary to ask existence what is your crystal message. Before getting into that though, I think your very first crystal message comes from the talisman you chose. And that is that this is a time in your life for building your wisdom, building your skills, working on your intuition, and linking your heart with your mind. So the gem of fluorite is especially known to increase memory capacity. It's recommended for students who have to study, for anybody learning a new skill, 
for anyone who reads and wants to improve their reading retention, like the amount of stuff that you remember from the books that you devour, it makes a great gem for all of that. And when it's green, it's especially tuned in to the heart. So uniting the heart and the mind is all about emotional intelligence and being able to think things through and make decisions, not only based on what's rationally the best, but also based on what feels good to you, honoring your intuition, honoring your boundaries, making it clear what you will and won't put up with, and being able to really tune into your emotional space. And so it's a really beautiful gem. I love green fluorite. And I also feel like there's a bit of a message in the Tibetan style bead. Although it's inlaid with rocks that are dyed, it's not actually uh, lapis lazuli, um, and the red stones are not actually coral. As a vegan, I don't use coral in my designs because um, because of the ocean life, the preservation of coral as a species. Um, but the symbology in this really gives me the impression of ancient astronomical devices. So if you're into things like sacred geometry, stargazing, learning about astrology charts and all that goodness, uh, this would make a great talisman symbolically as well as with the crystal energy. So that said, I'm going to play a little singing bowl to cleanse the deck on the table. And as I do this, I'll set the intention that whatever messages come through today, come through to serve the highest good of all those who chose pile one. You can take a deep breath in, exhale when you feel ready, and also set the intention that whatever messages you're meant to hear are the messages that are about to come through. All right, so for my pile one friends, it doesn't matter when you watch this video, if you're watching it on May 31st or June 1st, depending on my upload speed. If you're watching it right as I publish it, that's great. And the messages will go back a month and forward a month. But if you're watching this at any point in time in the future, the message will be rele relevant for you in your timeline. So if you hear me say this is a reading for the month of June 2022, don't worry. That's just when I'm looking at the cards, but the reading is for you now when you see it. So what are the messages for pile one? in the present, the past, and the future. So present is right here, right now. Past goes back about a month and future goes forward about a month. We always start in the present. So your present moment card is a fire element and represented by the stone topaz with the message of intention. And what intention is showing is you as this individual cloaked in the universe, creating something totally new, this little pillar of fire, which is actually like a pillar of golden topaz. This individual is holding a magical staff and you see a light above the crown chakra. And what this shows is being tuned in to the higher forces of creativity. In this particular deck, fire is the element of passion. And so what this shows is that you're either starting a new project or you're working on something creative that you feel really passionate about. The fact that the card is right side up is showing us that what you're working on is very favorable for you. It's something good. If you do it, it will be successful. And the reason I have to kind of slip it in if you do it, as opposed to no matter what, it will be successful, 
Uh, the reason I have to make it clear if you do it is that sometimes when we have a huge amount of passion and inspiration, if we miss the window of opportunity to actually develop the idea that we have, that stagnation can lead to long-term procrastination and a feeling like we missed out on achieving our potential. And I, I don't want to make this sound like I'm warning you or I'm cautioning you because the majority of your reading here is right side up and very positive. Um, but I do just want to say that you might feel a sort of lethargy. You might feel like it's okay if I let this go for a day or two. I can come back to it. No problem. Nothing will be lost. I can just restart when I feel like it. But the future card showing life force reversed, represented by Ruby, an earth element card, is showing that there is a possibility that this excitement you're feeling right now might wane if you don't jump into it right away. Now, the future is never set in stone, no pun intended, since we're looking at the stone cards or the crystal cards, but the, the future is never predestined. The future is completely dependent on the decisions you make and the actions you take right now. It's dependent on your free will. So the fact that life force is reversed doesn't mean that you are not going to be filled with high frequency life force energy, doing what you're meant to do, supported by the earth, nurtured by existence in your creative flow. It just means as of now, you haven't completed your project yet, so there is that possibility of lapsing into procrastination and then feeling like you don't have the same gusto that you once had to complete what you start. Um, so I would say the present moment, you have such clear ideas and such a divine creative drive that the best thing you can do is put it into practice and do your manifestations. Feel yourself empowered by the cloak of the universe, which represents having all the positive attributes of all the stars, all the constellations, all the elements of existence. Feel that you are empowered by everything that comes in contact with your energy and put your ideas into practice. By doing that, you'll be in a meditative space about a month from now where you feel like you've laid the foundations for your future. You'll feel like you're set. Uh, if you don't do this, like if, if you decide to procrastinate or put your ideas aside and maybe look at them again later, it's not like anything majorly bad is going to happen. It's just that you will feel like it's going to take a little more effort to get back into that creative zone again if you don't jump into it immediately. The past card of Journey shows that you have been working hard to get to where you are now. I don't mean that it's been a struggle or that it's been difficult, although it may have been for some of you, um, but no matter what, you have put in your effort. You've earned the creative burst you have now. You've developed your skills. You've learned what you needed to learn. You've studied what you've needed to study. It really makes sense to me now that you picked this talisman of all talismans, the talisman of wisdom, intelligence, and learning, because you've been on a learning journey. The card of sodalite is an air element card, and the element of air represents language skills, communication, wisdom, and mental faculties. So being on a journey with the stone sodalite represented by the air element, it's not exactly a physical journey. Maybe you traveled, maybe you didn't, but either way you have traveled intellectually. You've really stretched your horizons. You've stretched yourself. You've expanded and broadened your mind. You've learned a lot. And this journey of higher learning has been one that really inspires you. I would say that you are driven to seek knowledge and to learn as much as you can. 
This is one of my personal favorite cards just because I love the color blue so much. That's why I always wear my Iolite ring. It's one of my favorite cards because it has such a gorgeous mystical landscape where the two sodalite pillars in the foreground signal the beginning or the inception of something new. And when you get on that path and you walk through these two beautiful pillars making that gateway, it leads you to the top of the hill where there's another set of pillars, another gateway, this time made of crystal with both a pyramid and a dome in the background. Two sacred symbols one representing that higher life force energy, kind of like a cosmic battery bank, and the other representing the soft, fluid energy of feminine creativity. So it's like you're moving towards that balance between masculine drive, feminine receptivity, and the fact that the card is right side up shows it's been a good journey for you. It's been something positive. So I would say You've been doing the right thing for yourself. You've been exciting yourself in the right creative capacity. I'm just going to ask for one card from the Illustrated Crystallery. What can my dear Pile One friends do to make sure that they keep holding their intention, that they create their manifestation so that going forward in the next month, they tap into the fullness of their life force energy rather than fall into lethargy. How can Pile One make the most of their creative passion? Wow, you are the foundation represented by the stone howlite. The reason I say wow is that part of the message that came through today about life force energy represented by Ruby is that by living the fullness of your intention and your manifestation, you will be laying the foundation for your future. And so I say, wow, because it's always fun for me when the card randomly chosen matches exactly with the message we've already been sharing. So don't worry about laying the foundation for your future. You are the foundation for your future. It's not a matter of whether or not you feel like following through on your creative passion or continuing your journey of higher wisdom. It's almost not even a decision for you. It's just a state of being. You are always soaking up knowledge. You are always curious and interested in learning something more. And as long as you don't censor yourself, as long as you stay true to you, you will definitely make the most of that creativity. And that is setting the foundation for your future. That is being the foundation for your own future. What I love about the symbology in this card here, it's not only that it's so beautiful in such a cool way, in such an almost I don't know, symbolically mythical way where we see this overflowing teacup and we see, you know, tree branches growing out of this cosmic egg form and there's something like honey or coffee or tea or maple syrup, depending on what it looks like to you, dripping down onto everything. What I love about it is that the pooling liquid in the bottom here looks almost like the rings in the trunk of an ancient tree. And when that's overlaid on what looks like a stump here, it almost seems like a beautiful old growth tree has been cut down, which would be really sad, of course, for us environmentalists, for everyone, for nature, for the animals who lived in it, not just for us, but you know what I mean. So looking at something that could be almost sad and ending like a chopped down tree, but then realizing that new life is growing out from it, that there are new saplings emerging from the heart of this stump, growing out nurtured by the life-giving brew that's in this beautiful little teacup. 
a little egg hatching to become something more. It's cracking, it's being nurtured, it's being sustained. To me, what that represents is that sometimes in life, we might feel like we've been cut down or like our ideas have been ruined or shot or not fulfilled. And like we had something good going and then we've lost it. And sometimes, of course, that's demoralizing. But this card is like the layers of ourselves. So you might have been one thing, felt like you were successful in it, and then it came to an abrupt ending. So you had to reinvent yourself. Take the tabletop or the foundation of what you once were, which is like this stump, put something new on top of it. You know, balance a little teacup or a, a plant pot on this and then just trust in the process and then something new grows from it and then something new is contained within it and then existence will just start showering down whatever you need to sustain yourself onto it and the expansion is not only happening upwards it's also happening outwards the little roots that are coming out from the stump and so what that shows is that you've gone through many phases of identity You've gone through many different layers of yourself. You've built up these rings of wisdom within you. And you've identified as many different things. But all of those are relevant to who you are now. All of those are a part of the journey that you're continuing to walk. And all of those are your life force energy. And so the main message for you, if you chose this pile one, is that you've got this, you're on a journey of wisdom, you're filled with intention and power and that fiery imagination to create the life that you most want to live. And you don't need to worry about resources because you are those resources, you are the foundation, the life force energy awake within you will always lead you to your best place. So thank you so much for watching. I hope the reading was helpful for you. As always, I'll be doing a little extension of this reading for my patrons over on Patreon. So if you want to hear more and you're not already a patron over there, you can check the link in the video description box. Come and join. Come and join my group of friends over there where you'll see some exclusive content, including the bonus monthly tarot reading and some other fun little goodies like printable designed journal pages and stuff like that. For my patrons who are in the $10 a month tier, your private free, your private readings that are part of that will be coming up in the next few days. So I would say by February 3rd, sorry, February, what am I thinking? <laughs> by June 3rd at the latest, Maybe somewhere in the distant future, somebody's watching this video at the end of January, and that's why I'm saying February, but it's the kind of funny thing that happens when we do a tarot reading for a big group of people online like this. But anyway, if this is the end of our journey together today, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a beautiful month ahead. Bye for now. And hello to you who chose pile two. If this cool, happy little vintage Buddha surrounded by garnets on one side with these lovely neon blue appetite chips adorning the other side is your pick, then you're in the right place, or I should say at the right time. This is a really cool, unique piece of jewelry that I made using a recycled piece that I found at a thrift shop. Uh, when I make the junk journals that I have in my, in my store, um, Art of Gems Stationery, I love to buy the bundles of broken earrings and random broken jewelry pieces that they sell at thrift shops and at antique markets and give those pieces a new life by incorporating them in my journal designs. And this little Buddha was actually a single earring that had lost its partner, so one of a pair. And when I saw it in that bin 
of, you know, damaged and broken jewelry. I felt like this was the kind of piece that deserves to be worn. And the reason I'm sharing the whole backstory of thrifting the centerpiece of the, of the pendant for you is that I feel it's part of your message today, which is to take something old and make it into something new. So you might be going through a bit of a revitalization, you might be going through some kind of a glow up, you might be redecorating your bedroom or looking into a new wardrobe or spicing up your lifestyle or your routine in some way, but basically you're taking something that was discarded, like a single earring that lost its pair and making it into something new, like a pendant that wouldn't otherwise exist if it weren't for that single lost earring. So, and who knows, maybe the message is even literal. Maybe you've lost one of your earrings and were really upset about that and now you've got the idea to make the other one into a pendant. It could be, it could be something literal like that. But anyhow, since we're looking at crystal readings today, the other message for you, of course, comes in the form of the garnet and the blue appetite that I adorned this piece with. And I guess also the chrysanthemum stone in the middle that I've glued all of it to. So starting with garnet, it's a root chakra gem that's all about physical activity, vitality, life force, health, and wellness. And when we're drawn to anything made out of garnet, it symbolizes a time in our lives when we're really getting ourselves into shape, focusing on our well-being and putting in the effort that it takes to be active. And the neon blue appetite is a little bit more mystical. It's a throat and third eye chakra gem that's about awakening our intuition and also expressing that intuition. So not only tapping into the realms of visionary awareness and intense psychic intuition, but also sharing what comes through. So if you've ever thought about doing things like reading tarot or giving a crystal healing or a some kind of intuitive reading, analyzing astrology charts, or even doing like an energy healing. This would be a great time in your life to tap into that flow of wisdom, just based on the fact that you were drawn to this stone. And it's also a good time in your life to give yourself a bit of a health and wellness makeover. So with all that said, we'll get into your actual reading. I'll start by playing the singing bowl just to clear the decks on the table. And as I do that, we'll set the intention that whatever messages come through, come through to serve the highest good of all who chose pile two. Deep breath in. Exhale when you feel ready. And we'll look at your cards. The singing bowl was a lot more mellow for you than it often is. So this could be a time where part of that physical revitalization has to do with some rest and rejuvenation. Maybe it's time to give yourself a day at the beach or at the pool. I'm sorry, I forgot to give a sound warning. Somebody said last time their cat hated the sound. And I think the sound that cats hate, because mine started meowing here just now, is the sound of the cards shuffling. So I'm sorry, that must be a little close to the microphone. So we're doing a general energy reading today, starting with the Crystal Ally cards. So what is the message for those who picked Pile 2? We're going to look at the energies in the present, past, and future. So remember how I said it might be time to give yourself a day at the pool or at the beach, 
the cards are confirming that because your present moment card, Inner Peace, represented by the stone tourmaline, is a water element card. I think this is one of the prettiest cards in this deck, and it shows this gorgeous glowing gazebo made out of pink and blue and green tourmaline. It looks like it's in such a lovely natural spot. And the water element in the background represents cleansing, emotional well-being, and of course, inner peace. When the card is reversed, it's showing that at this point in time, you're going through a bit of stress, maybe a little bit of anxiety, and it would be nice to treat yourself to an inner peace day, whether that's a spa day or just picking a book that you love and giving yourself the luxury of time to read it without distractions. Maybe turn off your notifications for a while and go without some screen time. But that inner peace is meant for you, but it feels like you're not allowing yourself to fully relax into it and enjoy it. The card of the past, which goes back about a month, is the card of spirit represented by the stone Danborite. It's another really beautiful card where we see this crystal pillar with a gorgeous mountain background. And it's a very strong energy because the element is storm. And we know that because of these bolts of lightning here. When a storm element card appears, it shows a time of major awakening. So kind of having your ideas and your beliefs really shaken in a good way because it's right side up and creating in you a new passion to discover and tap into your spiritual essence. When this is here, but it leads to the inner peace card reversed, what I'm interpreting is that you've had a major shift in your core beliefs over the past month. And that's led you to a place where you're starting to question what you're meant to do, how you're meant to do it, with whom you're meant to share it, how you're meant to express yourself, because there can be a bit of a disparity between who you've discovered yourself to be very recently versus who you've believed yourself to be and therefore projected yourself as to the people around you before. So when you're going through a time of self-reinvention or rediscovery, one of the things that can cause anxiety or stress is the feeling of hypocrisy. If you keep acting the way you always acted, even though you no longer feel that way, it'll feel stressful because you're not being true to yourself. But if you completely change yourself up to match your new feelings inside or your new sense of identity, that can cause stress and anxiety because suddenly you don't vibe with the people who always seemed to get you before when you were different. And so I don't want to use anything too extreme, like say you're going through an identity crisis, because I don't think it's a crisis. I think it's an identity awakening. It's something really good that you're going through. But if you're not sitting with yourself in some form of contemplation over these changes, it can feel shaky. And so if you decide to take the advice of the cards and go to the beach for a day or sit by a lake and watch the water or a stream or a river or a swimming pool, or if there's really no water near you, and I'm sorry if there isn't, um, because I also love to be by the water, and I'm in a landlocked province, so I get it. Um, but if there really isn't water around you, even take a long bath or a long shower, have some aromatherapy, give yourself a treat like that, and then sit in meditative contemplation, asking the question of how you want to behave, how you want to think, and this might sound weird, but really it's, it's something we can control in ourselves. How do you want to think? How do you want to see the world? How do you want other people to see you? When you describe yourself, what adjectives do you want to use as your identifiers? And if you could decide how other people describe you to strangers, if they say, no, you should hang out with pile two. Pile two is really 
how would you fill in that blank? Really wise, really funny, really smart, really down to earth, really out there in the universe, <laughs> like anything you want. It's up to you how you present yourself and project yourself. And times when we discover new facets of our identity, they don't have to be alienating. You don't have to let go of all the people in your life when you go through a change. It's just a matter of kind of updating their software in relation to like updating their perception. So if you suddenly feel awkward around people because you're different than you used to be and you don't know how to bring the two worlds together, sometimes it's just a matter of telling people, hey, you know how I used to really like doing that? Well, now I kind of think differently and I would rather do this or be like this. And nine times out of 10, if it's somebody real, if it's somebody who wants to be there for you and wants to get you, they will immediately get on board with that new transformation and that new aspect of yourself. And then boom, you've got your inner peace and the card is no longer reversed. And when the cards are right side up in the past and the present, that leads us to a right side up card in the future. And we're looking at the card of integration represented by the crystal Igreen or Agreen, tell me how to pronounce that word, somebody who knows. <laughs> but when we see the message of integration with all these intersecting swirls of light, it's showing it is a time when you're coming into balance with your family, with your friends, with your coworkers, with society at large, with your inner self, with your spirit guides, with your angels with your cosmic starseed family, if you identify with that, with everybody. Integration is about bringing all the disparate aspects of ourselves, all of the different beliefs that we hold on to, all the different preferences, all the likes and all the dislikes, and coming into a cohesive whole where they're not conflicting with each other, but working with each other. See how all these different spots of light, they're not repelling each other like magnets or bumping into each other. They are just swirling and dancing. And that's how your life is meant to be. That's how all the different parts of yourself are meant to interact in this kind of a beautiful integrated way. And so because this card was the reverse card in the future following the inner peace card that was reversed in the present, I would say for sure that would be the thing that you're meant to come to inner peace about, like the message coming through is this message that you are updating yourself. You are growing, you are maturing, you are becoming more spiritually keyed into your truth. And at the same time, you're elevating the people around you. So you don't need to worry about leaving anyone behind. Just invite them along for that journey and you'll be able to integrate that energy. So I will ask for one card to bridge this present and future. So what is the final message of today's reading for those who chose pile two? Wow, so much life in you, represented by the gem, Parado. Speaking of society, we see the squirrely, the birdie, the butterfly, the snail, all these little woodland friends gathering together around the beautiful chalice that is overflowing with your essence. When the message comes up that there is so much life in you, it's showing that the other reason you deserve to give yourself a relaxing, rejuvenating sort of a spa day is that you live your life fully. You are not one to think of something you want to do and then not do it. You're the type who will do what you want to do. You're active, you're excited, you're enthusiastic. Balancing that with a little bit of also peacefulness and restfulness 
will be the key to that full integration. And I would also say, because this is coming up with a very clear earth energy vibe, like all the greenery in this card, it has a very strong earth mother nurturing nature feeling to it. That brings the balance into the water and the fire. Water and fire for fluidity and passion, and then earth for groundedness and practicality. You've got those cardinal elements. And the one energy we're not seeing, we've got fire, we've got earth, we've got water, we've got storm. What we're missing is air. So remember to breathe. Take the time to have a deep breath, enjoy it, feel it filling up your lungs, breathe out again slowly. If you go out walking, savor the fragrance of the springtime air. If you do yoga, focus on your breath work. Whenever there's one element missing like this, where every other element is present except for that one element, it's a sign that that's the element you most need to consciously bring in for yourself. So consciously breathe. If you go swimming, remember to lift your head out of the water and take in lots and lots of that breath of life. It's so important. It's so revitalizing. And that will also help you with your inner peace. So if this is where we're leaving your reading today, I hope it was enjoyable for you. I hope there was something helpful in all of this for you. If you want to hear more, I always do an extended reading on my Patreon page for those who like to support my work. And I will put a link to that in the video description below. And if you're one of my wonderful patrons who's in the $10 a month tier, which means you get a 15 minute private reading as part of your Patreon perk, you'll be getting that in the next few days. I'll have it for you by the 3rd of June. So much love to you, those who chose Pile 2, and we'll see you next time. And hello to you, those who chose Pile 3. If you picked this really cool talisman that I refer to as the ancient gaze or the ancient face, look at the look on that face then this is your reading this talisman is one that i sculpted using polymer clay that i gilded with mica powder and then made this little pile of rocks also sculpted to join the two faces together one of them i gave kind of an egyptian appearance with the eye makeup and the eyebrow details and the other has more of a wizened look with a little bit of wrinkles and the cool ancient looking cracked features in that polymer clay. It's meant to represent the different aspects of our identity, past life, present life, future life, ancient life, modern life, and all joined together with the sands of time, like these tiny little rocks. So the gemstones that I incorporated into this design are chrome diopside, which is this really vibrant looking green stone peeking out from the edges, as well as kind of a bluish green fluorite. And so your message might be kind of similar to those who chose pile one in that it's touching on the heart chakra with this bright green, as well as the mind which encompasses everything from memory retention to intellectual ideas and focus and self-awareness and being able to read and really soak up the wisdom that you're taking in. Fluorite is the gem of scholarly wisdom. It's all about learning something new, being passionate about your discoveries and then sharing that wisdom. And green gems are always about love, compassion, and tuning into your heart space. So you've picked a really cool, unique talisman. And with that, we'll get into your reading.
So I'll play the singing bowl just to set the tone in the room, to clear the decks from the energies of pile one and pile two. And as I do this, I recommend you take a deep breath and then set the intention that whatever messages come through will come through to serve the highest good of those who chose pile three. Deep breath in. Exhale when you feel ready. And we'll get started with your reading. So we're going to begin today by looking at three cards from the Crystal Ally deck, the Crystal Ally Oracle. What are the messages for those who chose pile three? And I'm sorry, I keep hitting the camera. I try my best to set this tripod <laughs> at a convenient angle for everyone. So the messages for pile three. This card really wants to be turned over. So that's present, past, and future. Wow, a very purpley energy. So starting with the present moment, we have a card of acceptance represented by the gem Lepidolite. And when we look at lilac Lepidolite like this, especially when it's right side up, it's telling us that the things happening in your life right now are not necessarily what you would have chosen for yourself if you could have picked from a menu of life experiences. However, they're not bad. What's happening in your life is not something that's going to be destabilizing or creating any long-term difficulty. You've come to the place of accepting reality as it is, but you also feel like there are aspects of yourself, aspects of your life that you would change if you could. Now, it's a water element card, which represents fluidity, gracefulness, receptivity, and cleansing. And so I feel like the best thing you can do for yourself at this point is cleanse away whatever feels stagnant. Cleaning your place, taking a long bath or a long shower, washing your car if you have one, sweeping any debris from your garden, vacuuming, taking out garbage, maybe donating things to a charity if you feel like you've got stuff cluttering up your place that no longer serves you. When we go through a change and we're accepting something that we wouldn't have necessarily chosen for ourselves, sometimes we can bring back in that sense of control in a good way, not control in like a type A, crazy, frantic kind of a way. No offense to the type A's out there. But one of the ways we can give ourselves that sense of satisfaction and feel like we're owning the situation is to do some form of a ritual cleanse. And of course, cleaning the place, taking a nice long shower, donating stuff, that's, that's on the physical level. But on the inner level, sometimes going to the depths of our emotions and purging. So giving ourselves the right to an emotional release, having a good cry, maybe even having a primal scream if you feel like you have to get something out. That can also be very, very healing and help with that journey of acceptance. Because this is a group reading, so there are lots of people watching uh, rather than a private reading where it's one-on-one, -on -one, just you and me. What happened is going to be different for different viewers, so please take only what resonates and leave the rest. Um, but some watching may have gone through a loss of a loved one, maybe saying goodbye to a relative, a friend, or a dear companion animal. And if that's the case, I am so, so sorry for your loss. 
Acceptance doesn't mean being okay with the fact that somebody has gone. It, it's, I'm sure you know that already. This will just be reconfirming what you already know within yourself. But when we're going through that grieving process, I know sometimes we feel guilty if we quote unquote accept the situation or accept the loss because it feels wrong to accept the unacceptable. And this is where purging and emotional cleansing and going to the depths of what we're feeling can be so vitally healing because a lot of times people around us will tell us to just move on. And this isn't only when we're grieving the loss of a loved one, it can also be when we're grieving the loss of a romantic relationship that comes to an ending, the parting of a friendship, even moving and really missing the place where you used to live. Whenever something comes to an ending, often people around us will be a little unsympathetic if they can't relate to exactly what we're going through. And they might tell us it's healthy to move on, it's healthy to let it go but we feel like we're not ready for that yet, and that's also okay. So acceptance doesn't mean that you have to accept something that you don't like, but it does show that you are going through your healing process really beautifully and really strongly by nature of the fact that it's right side up, whereas the past and the future are reversed. The best thing for you to do at the moment is be in the moment. And what I mean by that is don't worry about what happened. Focus on where you are and what you're doing, and that will help you get through whatever is going on. And don't worry about what the future is going to bring, because that could create some kind of anxiety or some kind of stress, or will I still feel like this, or will I feel differently, or what if I lose my connection to feeling this? Don't worry about any of that right now. Just treat yourself to your own presence. Now, I know I just said don't worry about the past, don't worry about the future, but don't worry, I'm still going to describe these cards for you and so that you get an understanding of what's going on. I will note they were both reversed, which does not mean a negative thing or that you don't have them. What it means is that the energies are still an untapped resource. So when a card is reversed in the past, when we're looking at an energy reading like this, it means that that energy was available to you in the past, but it wasn't fully actualized. And so it's still on the table. It's still waiting for you to tune into it now or in the future when you choose to. So growth represented by the gem green aventurine which is also a water element card from the past the fact that it was reversed shows that going back about a month you didn't really feel like growing or changing anything about yourself i have a feeling you've been going through something based on the acceptance card uh, so it's likely that if you look back a month and this is why i said don't worry about the past you might be thinking, I should have done more, I could have done more, I had an opportunity, I missed an opportunity. Don't worry, you didn't miss anything that's not still available to you. Whatever you could have done then, you can still do it now. You didn't lose, it. You didn't lose any opportunity or any inner growth process. You can still start your growing whenever you choose. What I love about this card, we see this little fairy child with her cute little monarch kind of butterfly wings, and she's holding a glowing egg, which represents a new birth, a new creation, and just the joy of being part of the cycles of nature. Since that was reversed in the past, it's showing that what's available to you to take up now, that was once available but still available, is the understanding of the circle of life and coming into harmony with the role you play in that life cycle. I feel like one other really healing practice, as well as going through any cleansings like cleaning, like ritual bathing, like donating, another great thing for you could be gardening, going out there, watering the plants, 
watching the little birdies start to hatch if you're in the northern hemisphere where we're in springtime right now. Whoops, I am so sorry. <laughs> My cat Minu never jumps up on the tarot table while I'm giving a reading and she is very insistent right now to disturb your reading or to join your reading. Come in, Minu. If I make my lap available, she'll jump down and sit on my lap. Yeah, there she is. Right after she flashes you her cat butt one last time. <laughs> Sorry about that. Minu, I guess, loves those who chose pile three because she's never done that before and she is purring up a storm. So I take that as meaning she approves of this message. Um, so as I was saying, another practice for you could be to start gardening, water the plants, go outside, put your toes in the grass, run through the sprinklers, tap into your inner child energy, because that's what this pretty little fairy really represents. Enjoy the sound of the bird song, get some quiet time outdoors and enjoy it. And oops, I'm just putting my kitty on the bed behind me. <laughs> You may also enjoy some sky gazing and especially watching the moon. So the card coming up for your future is the card of dreams. And one of the most mystical cards in this tarot deck, it shows a gateway made of sujolite, seems to be floating in the sky and reflected on the water simultaneously with that gorgeous full moon in the background. This to me, especially within the context of this reading, is telling me that your intuitive gifts come to you the most profoundly in the realm of dreams and dream work. So if you don't already do it, keep a dream diary, write down whatever details you can remember from your dreams when you wake up in the morning. Any of the details of what happened, what you saw, could be very interesting, very personally relevant. I don't necessarily believe in those books that you can get of dream interpretation where you you look up the meaning of, I don't know, a wombat because you dreamt of Australia and it means whatever specific thing. But I do believe that our higher selves will communicate to us in the symbology of what we're dreaming and that we can even connect with those we love by meeting them in a dream, whether they're also sleeping or whether they've been thinking about us a lot, or if they've crossed over beyond this veil into the next reality. I do believe we can experience those kinds of visitations and connections in the dream space. And I think that's one of the gifts that you have in this life is the ability to have that kind of mystical dreaming. And so because it was reversed, I would say don't worry about that or focus on that or feel like you have to do anything towards getting that. And similarly, don't worry about the growth or the cycles that you were meant to be awakening to. Really at this point, just focus on yourself. And I really feel what's happening for you will lead you to a really beautiful inner peace and a really powerful positive outcome. The reason I also keep saying don't worry about anything is that two of your three cards are water element and one is air element. Water element is about fluidity, going with the flow, graceful receptivity, feminine energy, being in the current of life, letting the river carry you where it will, surrendering to the tides. It's a very fluid energy, obviously, being that it's water. And air element is all about wisdom, intellect, and understanding. When all of your cards are water and air, now is not necessarily the time for hard work, struggle, or creative passion and throwing yourself into a new project, which would be the energies of fire and earth. Um, fire and earth are more the active physical elements. Air and water are more the receptive fluid feminine elements. And since those are your elements at the present moment, 
really give yourself that gift of rest and relaxation. Um, I know that's come up in another reading today, so maybe you were drawn to listen to more than one pile, in which case this would just be a further confirmation about that. I'll ask for one last card to conclude the reading for those who chose pile three. We'll look at a card from my tiniest little deck here, the Illustrated Crystallary. What is the final message for those who chose pile three? Doing this one. Wow, celestial quartz become inimitable. And so you are really in a phase of growth, renewal, higher spiritual self-discovery. It's kind of like the feeling I'm getting is that you're in the calm before the storm, like you're resting in a good way, in a good way. It's like you're, you're letting go of the old, you're coming to terms and accepting what is, and that's going to build up into something that as of now might not even be within the realm of imagination. I think it is really, really cool that these Stonehenge style gateways are visible in the Elestial Quartz card and also in the Sujalite card and this is now completing your trinity of purple energy because we're not just looking at celestial quartz here, we're looking at celestial amethyst. When I first started my journey of crystal healing, one of the first crystals that I really saved up for and spent quite a bit of money on was a big piece of celestial quartz. And I bought it from a shop in Vancouver called the Crystal Arc. And the ladies who were there, who were kind of my crystal guides, who taught me what I'm still carrying with me today, what I know about crystals, they told me that celestial quartz is the master teacher of the mineral kingdom. It's the crystal that every time you hold it, it reveals something new, has a deeper insight, a new understanding, a new message. I wish I had that celestial quartz here to show you. Maybe I'll, I'll hold it up in another reading because it's on my crystal jewelry table in the other room. If, if you go to my Etsy jewelry shop, uh, you'll see it in almost every jewelry photo. It's kind of the darker brown big crystal that I use in the background because I like to bring its energy into my listing photos. But anyway, when you look at Alestial Quartz, it has lots of different crystal peaks, lots of different points, kind of like an etched, an etched texture on the surface. And it's like if you take many, many, many little crystals and put them together in one bigger crystal, there's something just so magical about the vibration that it has. And when this card is coming up as the final message for you to become inimitable, it's like become like your own celestial quartz. You are your master teacher. You are the sum total of all the great things that you've ever wanted to be, that you've ever become, that you are becoming. And I love the Zen style circular painting framing the celestial quartz in the center of this card because once again that's reflecting the message that came through to you to not worry about the past or the present sorry the past or the future but to be here now in the present moment that's really coming through again and how cute I just noticed the wise owl in this card I don't think I've noticed him or her before, but how sweet. I think I remember hearing once that when you have a loved one who has departed, when you see an owl, it's a sign that the loved one is still with you, still thinking of you, still loving you. And I would see this as being a sign for anyone watching who has loved, lost someone, that owl can be that messenger. 
And if you're watching this and you haven't lost a loved one, because like I said, it's a group reading, so this won't apply to everyone. The owl is also the messenger of spirit in that you are connected to your higher guidance and awakening to a deeper intuition than you've had before. So again, pay attention to your dreams. Enjoy the messages and the clarity that come through. Enjoy the symbology that you're tapping into and enjoy this beautiful inner child growth. If this is where we're ending your reading today, thank you so much for joining me. And if you want to hear the extended reading, I will do a little extension once again for all of my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you to everyone who supports me there. I really appreciate it. And yeah, if, if this is where we end things, thank you again for tuning in. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.